So good evening, good evening and welcome along to another big music show here on NVTV. Coming up on the show this week, we'll have live music from the Mad Dalton, plus Emma Wallace will be live in the studio. But starting things off, a young man who's back with a brand new album called Kindred Spirits. Here is Malachi Kush. <laughs> There we go, that's uh, Malachi Kush and um, a song called Peggy Gordon and the man himself joins me in the studio. Malachi, how are you, sir? I'm great, thank you. I'm delighted to be here with you and uh, love to be back in Belfast for an evening. It's only taken you about 12 years to get yourself back into the studio here. <laughs> I don't think I was invited back until now. Um, it took 12 years for you to get over the first uh, event. I couldn't believe you told me 12 years since, yeah. we, since we were here before. With, yeah. And funny, I saw it coming up on social media somewhere recently and that. We, we had good fun. 
We okay. did back in the day, didn't yeah, we? We were younger and more carefree. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, I've known you right from uh, Fame Academy, I suppose, which yeah. was 2002. What's your it's, memories of Fame Academy? My memories are all great. And for me, heading there from Tyrone was like, you know, going into getting the gift of going into one of the best music academies that you could possibly. And when you think of the characters in there, Pam Sheehan and Kevin Adams, yeah. Cary Grant, all those guys who were just top of their game. And to learn from those people was, was just phenomenal. So I have great fond memories of it. And of course, I owe it a great debt of gratitude because without it, who knows where the journey would have taken me. Because the press, as I know here, and probably, and I think in England as well, they were going mad for you and Sinead at they the time. There were stories all over the place, yeah, weren't they? Yeah, they were. Uh, it's interesting. Have like you kept a, in touch? Absolutely, yeah. and we're, we, we do be in touch. Uh, we phone, a few, every few months we'll be on the phone and get a catch up. Uh, and she's very happily married now in England. She's got a couple of lovely kids. But Lamar, he was in the house, wasn't he? Lamar outside, was in the house yeah. as well, and David Snedden and yeah. Ainsley. Um, you know, Lamar had a fantastic career afterwards. Um, and we were funny, we lived, this sounds a bit, but this is the way it was back then. We both had the record contract under the same record company, myself and Lamar. And for that period, we were living in the Key West Hotel in London wow. for about six months. So we yeah. were in and out of each other's pockets all yeah. the time. So we had a great friendship. Uh, but again, once all of the touring and the hype and all the days down, then you're back to yeah. uh, some level of back to your own team and your own. And as you will know, I just love spending my time around home in Belfast and back in Tyrone and that, you know. Is it true that Prince William was a fan of you? Where did you hear that? Did I tell you this? Or did no, you didn't. Done, no. Your, done your research? I found it actually in a copy of the uh, Tyrone something or other earlier on today. <laughs> well, this is true. Um, I, after the show, I did a little bit of work with the London Irish Rugby Club. This is a very funny story, and it's very true. Yeah. As much as it doesn't sound like it should have happened, it did happen. <laughs> so the London Irish Rugby Club. And I would have went and sang for them pre-matches and you know had a real good relationship with them. And they'd won the league, uh, and afterwards they went to this exclusive club, um, which I was invited to. And in the VIP, in the curtained off area, where we all wonder what happens behind there, the royals were in there, Prince William, Harry, and their friends. Right. And some of the cousins, Beatrice and those guys, they were, they were all in there with their close security and all of that. So the chairperson of Lutton Irish lagged himself and myself in. At that point, you can imagine that the Fame Academy programme had just concluded. Yeah. So the hype was pretty high, and I was right being recognised in London as well as I would have been mm -hmm. here. So it was a surreal experience. So I went in with him, and shy as anything at that time, because I didn't want to approach William or Harry, <laughs> but watching, you know, from a, you can't believe that you're in the same zone, had me a few drinks, and off to the, off to the Luai pub, and I'm standing having a pee, as <laughs> men do, and who comes up to have a pee in the urinal beside me only? Prince William. Right. As true as I'm standing here. And I'm like, what do you say? Um, and and we were washing our hands and I didn't speak because I didn't know, you know, you don't know what the protocol is. Yes, yeah. so I didn't speak and he's washing his hands and he says, you're, you're Malachi from, from the big house in Highgate on the hill. <laughs> and I said, yeah, and you're William and you come from a fairly big house yourself. <laughs> and we, 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 we hit it off, we had a great laugh. We had a, great, we had a few, few drinks together. We had a great chat, great conversation. He talked about his mum and how she really loved the Irish and she loved visiting here. Um, obviously she had passed, and he was, but he spoke a lot about her and we really got on very well for that one night. Mm -hmm. Never heard tell of him since. Oh, well, yeah. <laughs> Wasn't invited to sing at the wedding. <laughs> <laughs> you also sang with Shania Twain, didn't you? I did, yes. It must have been a great experience. Lovely experience. Shania Twain was one of those people that really stayed with me and has done since because she was so open with her experiences, with her um, music life, with her early life, how she struggled really hard as a young person. Yeah. But we got to sing with her um, live on the on the BBC show and she was so embracing of all of that, you know, and she was so encouraging and wanting us to achieve and open with advice and all that. And she's just, she's remarkable. Yeah. Yeah. Now, over the years, you've tried many different styles and genres of music, but you still always go back to the traditional stuff, yeah. don't you? Well, I call myself a folk artist, contemporary folk, because my first album, Malachi, was a ballad album, mm -hmm. contemporary folk. My second album was a Celtic heartbeat album. You know, record companies and management, all of that, have their steer on your direction. And uh, sometimes I wonder, if I'd have been more headstrong and stronger as, as a, an individual, um, I may have not went some directions. Mm -hmm. um, however, listen, everyone has to learn. 
and everyone has to grow and as an artist I think I feel like I've done that I feel now I'm the most comfortable I've ever been in my skin but folk is my is my is my home mm -hmm. and that's where the heart is let's talk about the new album Kindred Spirits where you've joined up with and this must be amazing with the legendary Phil Coulter yeah that it must is. be a dream come true it is because as a performer as a singer you know you wonder as you trudge along am I doing anything right here uh, whenever Phil approached me first to work with him that was like such a confidence boost because I thought well he's obviously seen or heard something that he likes and to have developed a friendship with him to the point now that we've that he produced this album he played on it and of course it's his material it's in, his music speaks volumes it's just a fabric of our society those gold and silver days the shores of the Swilly the lifeboat Donegal Danny um, Town I Love So Well just where do you stop you know it's, it is a dream come true for me to have any association at all but to have an album with his fingerprints all over it is just very very special so what's next is there a tour to promote the album towards the end of the year we will be doing a tour okay. i've just released the music video which you kindly commented on thank you so we're letting that breathe for a minute mm -hmm. and then we're going to do some stuff towards the end of the year towards the autumn we're looking forward to getting out on the on the road Okay, well Malachi, good luck with the album. You're going to perform Kindred Spirits now for us, aren't you? With pleasure. This is the title track. This is written by Phil. There's a couple of songs, new songs written by him on this album. Then you've got the old classics, but this is one that really has seemed to have touched people in a very special way, and I hope it does for your viewers tonight. Well, Malachi, good luck with the album, and uh, thank you Thanks for joining us. Much. All right, here we go with uh, Kindred Spirits. One more time, here is Malachi Kush. is fading as I gently kneel and say an ave for my mother as her spirit slips away away to join my father and to share eternity Now 
kindred spirits will share eternity. So there we go. That's a song called A Trespasser from Emma Wallace, who joins us now in the studio. Emma, how are you? I'm very well, thank you. Thank you so much for having me. So how long have you been doing the whole singer-songwriter thing for then? Sort of seriously for about three or four years, I'd say. I released my first EP in 2016 and decided to bite the bullet in January of this year and I went freelance from my, from my full-time job and now I'm 
I feel like a full-fledged musician. It's great. But of course, in your other life, you work in television, don't you? I know, yes, I feel right <laughs> at home. Um, that's right, yeah, I, I worked for the European Golf Tour um, as an assistant producer for six years, which was fantastic. I was traveling all over the world. I was in South Africa, all of Europe, of course, Asia, the Middle East, and I did one Ryder Cup in America as well, Brilliant. which was wow. fantastic. So I'm very lucky, they've, they've had, they're having me back as a freelancer about 10 weeks this year. So it's good balance between music and media. What about the live performing? You're doing lots of that at the minute, aren't you? Yeah, loads, really enjoying getting out into the public and meeting the people of Belfast. It's great to, you know, be right in the thick of things. And I love those intimate gigs where you can, you know, almost touch the people and they can come and ask you questions about your songs and your style. Um, and recently I actually opened for Nathan Carter and that was fantastic. It was part of um, his Search for a Star competition. So I was one of the runner up, runners up, mm -hmm. which was really cool. So I got that opportunity. And since then I've been offered the chance to open for him again on August 11th at Gig in the Garden in Cookstown. So that's great. And lots of other little things going on in the summer. And how so, do you feel about the country stuff? Do you want to go down the country road totally? I wouldn't say I'm country and Western, but I'm, I'm probably more like you know, modern country, mm -hmm. Nashville country, but I love the script and I love Ryan McMullen and a lot of their songs could pass for country yeah. music nowadays. So, th you know, there doesn't have to be strict genres, I think, in the way that maybe there was in the, you know, the 60s and 70s. And of course, you've been out to Nashville. So how did you enjoy the whole experience? Oh, it was there? the best. The first time I went um, for CMA Fest and I was due to go to New York the week after. But I had such a good time. I stayed. I stayed in Nashville for the whole two weeks. <laughs> it was just so good, and I spent an absolute fortune on accommodation for that second week. But I just didn't want to leave. And then the second time round, I went out for two weeks, and I'd made some contacts with writers and you know producers, and I played a few shows and and wrote some some really cool songs. One I'm actually going to play today, Brother, was Brilliant. a song that I wrote okay. in Nashville as a co-write with um, a guy called Ian McConnell who um, he's, he's out in Nashville now playing the, playing the circuit, so mm -hmm. well, we, we had Colin Kerwin on recently, who's based out of Nashville now as well, doing mm -hmm. great business out there. Would you consider a move out there? Oh, absolutely, I'd love to, but again, I'm really happy where I am, and I do, like I say, I've always got the media in my mind, and that, that side of my career is something that I'm not gonna totally forego, because yeah. I'm passionate about that as well. Music's a bit different, you know, you, you could do, three or four weeks of work and not make a penny, you know, so you do have to be smart about it and make smart decisions, especially at the stage that I'm at, you know, sort of independent artist stage, so, yeah. If people want to find out more information about you, how do they do that? It's easy, Facebook, Instagram, nowadays, you could probably just call up to my front door, my information's <laughs> probably on there. Um, Instagram, at Music Emma Wallace, and Facebook is the same, so. Okay, you're gonna do one more song before you go? Yep, I'll and be what doing. What are you gonna do this time? Brother. What's the story behind this? It was shortly after my grandfather passed away and my brother got engaged shortly after that. So it was just a bit of a, you know, tumultuous time in our, in our family and lots was changing and, you know, you sort of question your life whenever, you know, there's a big loss in the family and then Ross got engaged. And again, that's, you know, a huge change and it's great to welcome a new person into your family, but it's, it's change. No person, I think, handles change well. You know, they might act like they do, but, you know, even though things are changing, yeah, I want to keep that innocence of youth that we had. He's my only brother and, you know, I want him to take that into his life now and, and you know, continue on with that in his marriage. So we wrote Brother based on sort of Castle on the Hill type, you know, vibe. So kind of Irish pop, as I like to call it. I think Ed Sheeran is, is very Irish in his music. So. Of course he is. <laughs> All right, let's hear it then with Brother. Here is Emma Wallace. Tall and I looked up to you We took on the world together Fighting monsters in the woods We would walk to school And splash in every puddle That was on our way yeah. When we got there Man, our teachers never knew Quite what to say Hey 
pick me up when I feel down and you make me laugh till milk spread out. Brother, we are old and I, but ooh, you and I will never be too old to skip rocks on the sea or talk all night. Ooh, even though the years go fast with you, it's like no time has passed. We're still as wild as we were when days were cheap. Twenty-nine, I'm twenty-seven. You're a doctor with a flat darn time. We still keep up on the daily, even though I'm not around. We no longer share a bathroom, but we share what life has thrown at us. And when Papa passed away, just standing by you was enough. Hey, you still pick me up when I feel down. Now you make me laugh, now beer sprays out. Brother, we are old and I, but ooh, you and I will never be too old to skip rocks on the sea or talk all night. Ooh, even though the years go fast with you, it's like no time has passed. We're still as wild as we were. When days were cheap and we were free You've got a woman now who will love you till the end She'll be your champion, your rock and your friend So give all you can give her and remember Never be too old to skip rocks on the sea or talk all night. Ooh, even though the years go fast, go living like no time has passed and stay as wild as we were when days were cheap and we were free. Marseille, I greet you today undaunted Under circumstance nobody wanted From the streets near where we once flaunted Let me share Oh Marseille, you're like the sister that I never had Oh so good when I was always being bad and I hope that you'd never see me said, hear my prayer. There was a time, yeah, there once was a time when we laughed here, my friends and I. And pretend it's okay when they've all gone away. Now hang from this tightrope with I. Oh, Marseille, they say love can cry you an ocean. And if you've ever had a notion, then you'll know the kind of devotion is killing me. Once in a while, angels call, yes, they call, and you answer in body and prayer. They tell you you're blessed in the heat of your flesh But all I need is to know that you care Oh Marseille I hear there were once sacred places Of 
which now there remain only traces but all I see now is haunted faces on the sea Some might say it's time to be brave, but I've still a tear in my eye. I won't fade away with the light of the day, won't you sing with the people and I? Loudly they come and softly I'll go with the freedom that I've always known. All I can say is we got lost on the way, but peacefully my wind does flow. Oh Marseille, I hope now I know what you need from me. It's more than just some old melody. Things can't go back to how they used to be, say la vie. So that's a song called Oh Marseille from The Mad Dalton and Peter joins me in the studio. How are you, sir? Yeah, I'm doing well. Thanks. Great stuff. Tell us about that song, Oh Marseille. Tell us the story about the background to it. I think I started writing it really just after some of the stuff that had been going on in France, Paris and Nice, some of the attacks that had happened there. But I also had a friend um, in Canada who had uh, traveled over to the continent. Um, and he said to me, yeah, I'm going to Marseille to collect my aunt's ashes. And I was like, oh, that's a really visual sort of thing. You're going to Marseille to collect these ashes. So I sort of just playing around as I do and it sort of turned into sort of Au Marseille and developed from there. And that's really how it came about. So that's just one of the songs that's on uh, the new album, Open Season, which you released uh, recently. How long did it take to get the album ready? I was recording at Millbank Studios um, with James Little, who helped produce the album, um, and Michael Mormika, uh, who did drums on all the songs, um, from about early 2016. And we basically had a complete album, more or less, by the middle of last year. But uh, I did a pledge campaign mm -hmm. um, to help with just some of the post-production costs. So they say you have your, your whole life to prepare you for your first album. Yeah. In this case, physically, I'd started recording it approximately three years ago. Wow. Yeah. So how do you find the Belfast audiences? Is there a good music scene in Belfast at the minute? Ah, uh, Belfast is a great music scene. Um, you know, I've lived here longer than I've lived anywhere else in my life, and it's a real honor and a real privilege to be part of the Belfast music scene. Um, fantastic, fantastic performers. Um, it's a very vibrant scene. Um, I think that there's a great deal of support within it. Um, I think any night of the week you can go out and find some real quality live original music, which is testament to what's happening here. Um, so it's pretty neat to be part of that. So you were born in Scotland, yeah. you lived in Canada. Is Belfast home now? You know, I think that we're always passing through, um, but I think that home is wherever, wherever you base yourself. So right now, Belfast would be home. Okay. Yeah. So your album at the minute, uh, picking up some great reviews and uh, picking up uh, lots of airplay as well. It must be great to hear your songs on the radio. Yeah, it's, it's really humbling. Um, it's really exciting. It's really different, I suppose, when that happens because a lot of the songs, you, you, you might have been writing them carefully, sort of almost incubating them for a long time. 
and you don't really release them until you feel that they're ready. But then once you let them go, they're really kind of like not yours anymore. They're like, it is like watching a ship going out at sea kind of spring off into the horizon. And once they're out in that sort of public domain on the radio, yeah. other people are hearing them. There's something very rewarding about that. And it's, it's a really rewarding thing to have people like your music. And uh, it's not always going to be everybody's cup of tea, but um, it's nice for people to get something from obviously the songs that you're making. and. Uh, are there any gigs coming up that we should know about? I am playing a solo show opening up for Danny, uh, Gordon Street. It's one of uh, Johnny McKee's Shiznai gigs. That's in October. There'll be a, new, a few more things along the way. We've got other festival dates planned. Um, and uh, if people are looking to see where I'm playing next, just uh, check me out on Instagram or Twitter or Facebook. It's updated pretty regularly. Okay. Yeah. Right, you're going to do one more song for us. You're going cool. to do Seafaring Man. Tell us a story about this one. So, Seafaring Man, um, my grandfather was born in Hull, and he was a sailor. He ran off to sea when he was like 14. He was like six foot four, so he got away with it. Um, so, it actually started off being about that. But I think, in terms of its nautical theme, I think I was really just trying to, you know, really just sort of feeling at home here in Belfast and the nautical history that there is here and yeah I just sort of ended up sort of channeling that and the nostalgia of maybe you know men going away women walking them back or not as the case may be uh, and vice versa so yeah all right well Peter good luck uh, with the album and uh, thank, thank you, you for joining us on the big music show thanks very much thank you thank you very much for having me Robin thank you cheers so here is the Mad Dalton with Sea Faring Man Seafaring man Don't always come back home They hunger for the waves Strange north winds to blow You were once a child Do you remember anything? Sitting on your daddy's knee Wondering when you'd see him again mm -hmm. I was once a child And I remember everything To times that disappear and you'll never know again. They could see you now and ask you what you've done. Sit down by the fire. Toast the years have been and gone I'm not looking back All I see is in front of me Come down to the docks, my girl And watch the sun as it sets in the sea When it's time to leave, there's no news right away. Light a candle, say a prayer, be sure to ride every day. When the sails they catch and the albatross appear, and all won't be long. For I'm home and whispering in your ear. Dun, 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 dun. Don't 
can always take you back They'll look you in the eye Give you a heart attack So treat her like a fool And you just might risk everything Thinking you're so cool while your ship is sinking